Howdy, today I'm going to be comparing two mid-sized camp survival knives as I would class them. So this is the Gerber Strong Arm here and this is the K-Bar Mark 1 Navy Knife here. Now both of these knives are roughly the same size and I really hadn't seen much about this one on YouTube. There's a couple of decent-ish videos, but just to get a good clear look at the knife, um, because I thought this was a very similar purpose knife to this Gerber Strong Arm, but it's actually a little bit different in terms of how it's built and what it excels at. So what I'll be doing is I'll be comparing these two knives in just the general use of them, the general build of them, and um, drawing some kind of conclusion about which one might be best for you. Both of these I'll start with their excellent knives. They're both US made knives, both using pretty basic materials with fairly rugged construction, and um, both of them coming in under 100 Australian dollars, um, or probably under 50 US dollars over there, to be honest, because you guys seem to get great deals on your US made knives. So yeah, um, K-Bar Mark 1, Gerber Strong Arm. Let's get into the attributes and I'll uh, talk about how each one wins, how each one you know, uh, is bested by the other and whatnot. Alrighty, so as soon as I took the Mark 1 out, I realized it was a rather different beast to the Gerber Strong Arm, uh, illustrated greatly by the types of blades that are present. So the Mark 1 has a 1095 steel blade sort of coated in this uh, I guess it's just like a black paint type material. It's baked on, I'm sure, but it has started to come off uh, during the last week or so of use. Um, but yeah, it's a resistant to rust sort of coating to protect the 1095. The grind is flat and the blade at the thickest part is 3.9 millimeters thick. The um, strong arm has a 420HC blade that is saber ground, so that means it's flat here, like flat as, in, as flat as the stock came, and then the primary or this, the edge comes from this line here. So all the way down there. So it makes for a much stouter blade. Um, there's a lot more thinness here that could perhaps tear out or fail if you were to hit like a knot of wood or something like that. Whereas this one is reinforced by all this thickness which then you know, is a steeper, well a less steep I guess uh, depending on the way you're looking at it. But yeah, much less fragility here, much, much thicker all the way down. So much stronger, stouter knife. Um, in terms of how they perform, well, it's quite obvious really. This one slices and cuts more acutely. Uh, it's uh, easier to shave wood with, easier to, easier to dig wood out with, um, easier to slice food with and whatnot. Um, the K-Bar is gonna be your actual performance king out of the two of them, but then the Gerber is the one that's not gonna fail during any sort of abuse. It's just made to absolutely keep going, even though, yeah, you're probably gonna to have to dig in a little harder or modify your angles if you wanna do your wood shaving a little bit, because it is quite a, a chunky edge. Um, you'll um, have the, like, the lifespan probably is, is greater on this in terms of being forgiving to your stuff ups. Um, versus the K-Bar, which is a much more delicate tool, really. Like, look, look at those tips. Look at, look how much thicker the strong arm is all the way down to the tip. You could pry with this one. You would not want to pry with this one. Uh, with regard to the uh, edge retention of the steels, I put a 17 degree bevel on both of them, and you can see that just shows how much um, material is behind that Gerber edge. Look how far, look how tall that bevel is just to get to 17 degrees. I had to remove a lot of that material. Uh, once it was though, once it did, um, the Gerber cut about 75 times through the rope and the uh, K-Bar cut um, 100 times through the rope. So the 1095 with a 17 degree uh, polished edge seemed to do a little bit better, eh, significantly better. Uh, this only cut about three quarters of as much as this. Actually quite simple really, isn't it? 75 cuts, 100 cuts, three quarters. But for knives like this, um, edge retention isn't the most important thing. Uh, I would say that field serviceability is, um, and stability is, and reliability. And both of these are good, reliable steels. Uh, 420HC is like stainless. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to sharpen than this, just a little bit. Um, you're still going to be able to sharpen both of these on, you know, rocks and belts and things that you have just lying around camp. Um, or you just carry like one of those little, um, uh, like a diamond sharpener from you know, a Lansky stone or something like that and you should be able to keep on top of both of these without a worry. So yeah, good choices for steels for both of them. The 1095 may add a little bit of toughness, so even though it's a thinner knife, it, mo it probably is just as just as sound for, you know, your light splitting and whatnot, but if you're going to be doing crazy, you know, sticking the knife into trees and jumping on them, then you're probably going to want the Gerber Strong Arm. Uh, I did battening with both of these, just like edge stuff, um, and I've done crazy stuff with the Strong Arms, and it's been absolutely fun, but both of them held up for those you know, pretty basic camp tasks. Um, so the blades, they're both good, but they're both rather different. Speaking of different, the handles. 
So the handles are rather different as well. The strong arms is all about grip and staying in your hand while you're doing those stabbing motions or, you know, severe cutting motions or whatever. Uh, it has it's covered in grip, covered in like rubberized texturing. It's got some a, a cut in here where your fingers will sit. Um, it's got a forward guard and a rear guard to sort of keep your hands between these two points here. It is a, you know, it's not going out of your hand once it's in your hand. The K-Bar is a grippy knife too, and it does have this frontal guard as well, and a, you know, a fair hourglass shape on the rear too. Um, what I've noticed with both of them though, is when you're doing work which involves pushing down into something repetitively, the K-Bar is far more comfortable. It's um, The roundness here sits in uh, this part of your hand much, much easier. And after some push down cuts, you're not feeling the same pain that this, this starts to feel rather thin here, um, pushing upwards into your hand. In fact, the whole knife handle is just a little bit thinner. Grippy, absolutely, but just a little bit thinner. In terms of comfort, the K-Bar is the go. If you're looking for something that you want to be doing maybe a bit of protracted carving with or something like that, then this is definitely the one to get. Again, really different knives. Just because they're the same size, I, um, I, I'm glad that I've tried this K-Bar because I sort of just wrote it off as a very similar knife to the strong arm. Uh, in terms of the handles ends, uh, on the uh, K-Bar you have a hammer pommel and on the strong arm you have like a glass breaker slash, you know, pressure point, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, pressure point pommel or whatever you'd call it for, you know, striking, cracking coconuts, cracking skulls, all that sort of stuff. Whereas this one, I mean, you could crack something with this and you could probably crack some hazelnuts with it or whatever, but um, definitely more akin to like your camping knife, which has, you know, this to hammer in your tent stakes. Um, really up to you what you prefer, um, I guess, which you use more. I don't use the pole of my knife for anything because uh, unless it comes with a sheath that you can really hold onto the part here, um, I just don't like to have my knife sort of poking up at you know, it, when I've got sort of kids or pets running around. So I generally don't use the poles for anything much on my knives. Both of them are in pretty flash nick still, because even this one I've had for ages and I've never really thought to use it for much. Um, so yeah, that's just going to be up to you which you prefer. Uh, both of these knives have great sheaths. So the Gerber Strongarm has a variable sheath that you can use as either a standard, you know, vertical carry sheath. Uh, which just goes over your belt. You can put it over your belt without taking your belt off, which I guess is nice. Is that nice? I don't, don't really notice the difference, but I guess if you have other things on your belt, you know, b between where the knife was and the buckle, it might be nice to not have to take those things off too. Uh, and it is a really, really wide loop, so you could be able to put it on any sort of military, tactical, police belts as well. Um, you can also take the Gerber's sheath off and just put the plastic part horizontally on your belt. Um, yeah, I had a go at this, but it, you have to be a much more tactical cat than I am for this to work. So yeah, and then the K-Bar sheath has a um, much more simple, you know, thread it over your belt, but it clicks the knife into place really, really nicely. It's still like a relatively molded sheath. The knife does sort of just sit loose in there, but it's held really tightly in there by like plastic that's, you know, locks into this, um, this frontal guard here. And then you've got two straps, one that goes around the top of the handle and one that goes around over the guard. So the knife is definitely not coming out at all. Um, a totally fine sheath, it pops out of it just fine, really, really good, happy with either, both sheath. Um, I think I actually, as crazy as this is, as the, much as the options in the strong arms are nice, I like the simplicity of the K-Bar sheath, just because it doesn't have as much sort of nylon webbing flowing, uh, sort of floating everywhere. The Gerber seems like it's got a little bit much going on just for carrying it normally. Um, you know, it's just, it's a slight preference, but it's, it's still, um, I guess it's still there, so I guess I'll still bring it up. But yeah, 
great simple sheaths for both that you get a lot for the money because a lot of times these cheaper or these more economical knives they're going to be um, you know they'll really let you down in the sheath they'll just give you a floppy nylon sheath or something like that um, both of these have gone you know, proper well built well made sheaths that are obviously made by the company for these knives so really really happy with either of them uh, in terms of durability, so overall durability, um, the Gerber Strongarm is a much more durable knife than the, um, the K-Bar. The Strongarm has a thicker tang all the way through and it has a more robust tang all the way through the handle. These, these taper in a little bit behind and then come out at this pole here which goes, it's a sort of an odd shape. I'll, if I can find an image of one cracked open, I will, I'll put it up now. But um, yeah, it's got a more robust tang than this one does. And you'll be able to see this tang here. Uh, if I hold it up, you might even be able to see, um, where are we? Okay, I'll put an image up then because this pretty much goes to this thickness um, at the join. So this is the thickness of the tang going all the way through and pretty much above where it says USN, that's the knife thinning down to that tang at this join here. So. With abuse, not with standard use, you'll be fine with standard use, even with a bit of splitting and stuff, but with abuse, these often fail here. Like, well, not often, but they can fail here if you're putting like stress this way on them. Um, or, you know, if you're battening and you accidentally hit it, you know, hit something to the side and you're holding it wrong and you give it a twist, it can fail there. So not a, not a knife that is as durable as the strong arm. The strong arm is probably one of the more durable enclosed handled knives. Supreme durability, you're obviously gonna go have to go and get a slab handled knife. I mean, I even saw a, a cold steel SRK uh, break the other day uh, on Big Brown Guy's video. Yeah, he was abusing it, but um, uh, check that out because it just failed right here. Whenever you move the tang thickness, um, that always makes a point where under ridiculous conditions, they can break, for sure. See, so yeah, overall, I'm really glad that I've tried this K-Bar because I had really um, not much idea from other videos on what it was actually like. I, I had a feeling it would be the same USMC kind of stick tang construction, but I did picture it being a little bit more um, like the Stronger, but it's actually quite different. It's a much more differently purposed knife. This knife would actually make, if you're happy for its, I don't know, I know a lot of this stuff, like it or not, is visual appeal. It doesn't look like a bushcraft knife. No, it doesn't. But there's really not a great deal that would stop it from being a really great one because it actually has the perfect handle for those types of tasks. It's got a nice round hand, palm filling handle with cutouts on the side for you to modify your grips and do your, your finer sort of work or, or your, your pull cuts, that sort of thing. Really, really comfortable for, for raking across surfaces using as a draw knife, all that sort of thing. The 1095 steel, I mean, people love that. The outdoorsmen love the 1095. You know, it's it's worth considering if you're after something really cheap that's gonna do a good job at doing all of your camp tasks, really. It's absolutely fine. It's not gonna take the same amount of abuse as the strong arm. Um, but you know, none, neither of these knives are you know full on hardcore survival knives. The strong arms are particularly um, robust sort of tactical combat you know utility knife I guess you'd call it but um, you know if you're wanting a strong a, a strong survival knife you're probably going to be after like an SE Hunglas or a you know an Ontario SP you know SP8 machete or you know something huge like that it's um or a Falcon even A2 or you know one of those enormous knives um, these are just good utilitarian blades and I guess the choice is yours if you want something that's super robust that you can you know pretty much jump up and down on then yeah the strong arm is probably the one but you're after if you're after something that's going to do things a little bit more um, you know with a bit more attention to detail and you know a little bit more controllability then I think the K-Bar Mark 1 might be a great knife for you under $100 for both of these with great sheaths, American made with reliable steels, well put together materials. Um, two real good wins, really, they really are. Um, yeah, edge retention, 1095 is gonna beat the 420 by a little bit, but then the 420 is never gonna rust on you. Um, in terms of grips, you've got um, one that's never gonna come out of your hand versus one that is gonna be usable for a long, long time before you get sore. Um, you can choose whether you want either a skull cracker or a, or a nut crusher or whatever you're going to call them. They're really, really excellent choices, both of them. Um, and I'm happy with either. I would suggest either or or. I would suggest there's even probably room in your life for both. Um, but yeah, I hope I've laid out pretty cleanly the differences and I, don't know, I hope I've got you, you know, keen on one or both or either of the, these knives or whatever. Um, this is definitely like a class of knife that I really enjoy carrying. It's like a little bit larger than the Falcon even F1 style sort of compact 
uh, companion knives, and then a little bit smaller than your SRKs or your uh, whatever your Boca Vox rolls. These are probably more in line with just being actual survival knives. So, um, just a really nice carryable little blade um, that will do a fair bit of work for you at camp or at war. Who knows? Alright guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.